Hello, welcome to our video of our recent trip to Ireland. We had a great time visiting some of these small but iconic pubs and uh, hope you enjoy, so grab some popcorn. Well, after a seven and a half hour flight, we were sure glad to get to our hotel. Uh, first thing we did was cruise up and take a nap for about four hours. After our nap, we couldn't stand it any longer. So we headed down to Brennigan's for our first freshly poured pint of Guinness. Next morning we took a walk down along the canal to a little uh, bistro that served crepes and some really good coffee. After a day of cruising around Dublin seeing some of the sights, we stopped by the church brewery for a uh, welcome dinner and of course a couple more pints of Guinness. Day two we were finally on the road. Uh, we met Peter our bus driver and tour guide. He was great during the whole trip. Uh, so we cruised down the road to Kilkenny and uh, had a great day there. One of the first things we did when we got there was uh, met up with one of our walking tour guides. Uh, again, he did a great job telling us a little bit of the history about the town. Patrick's. Just behind you, behind the coach up the top of that street road is St. Patrick's uh, Catholic, Catholic Church. So that's the four sections of Kilkenny. So I'm originally from the St. Canis's end of Ireland. Great, when I married great. problem guys, of course, you're gonna, you know what I'm going to say now. She went on to marry three more. So she married four husbands <laughs> in total. And the same thing happened to all of them. <laughs> 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 so she's accused of being the first original um, Black Widow, we're going to call her. But she... On our way over to Sullivan's Brewery, we walked through the streets of Kilkenny and watched some of the buskers play. Uh, Buskers is another word for street musicians in Ireland. It was downtown we saw the uh, old jail and uh, where the Smithicks brewery used to be. A short walk along the River Noor gave us some uh, pretty good views of the Kilkenny Castle and that took us to Sullivan's Brewery which is uh, a brewery that's actually older than Guinness Brew House. On our walk back to town, Peg snagged a pretty nice hoodie from the Kilkenny Cats, the local hurling club. Uh, then we sat down and enjoyed the music and had a few uh, Irish coffees and uh, maybe a few more Guinnesses. After a dinner, a good night of sleep, and a healthy breakfast, we started back off on the road. Our first stop was the Marine Bar.
worst thing is after swearing off drinking for the entire day at 10.30, here we are with Irish coffees in our hand again. This bar's been serving beer since the early 1700s and is known mostly for the uh, great music that's played here live almost every night of the week. As their saying goes, if music be the food of the soul, then welcome to the kitchen. We really enjoyed listening to some live traditional Irish music played by the owner's son. One of the really cool parts is just seeing all the memorabilia on the walls and how these uh, pubs on the countryside is just steeped in history. Our next stop was Blarney Castle. It was built nearly 600 years ago by one of Ireland's greatest chieftains, Cormac McCarthy. First castle built on this site was a wooden structure built around 1210 AD. Been torn down and rebuilt three times with this being the latest version built about 600 years ago. steps to get to the top was insanely steep and might I say a little claustrophobic. There are many myths about kissing the Blarney Stone and where the stone came from, some even steeped in deep religious meaning. At the end of the day, we just wanted to kiss the Blarney Stone so we could say we did. So me and Peggy just kissed the Blarney Stone up on Blarney Castle. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Peg said, I can't reach it. And I said, we came 3,000 miles, surely we could go another inch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the steps coming up here are really steep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope it's not as bad going down. <laughs> I think it'll probably be as bad going down. <laughs> The murder hole was a pretty neat feature too. Just inside the front door, this is where you could dump hot oil or stab people with a long spear if they tried to break into the castle. The manor house of Blarney Castle was pretty cool too. It's actually still inhabited and uh, Peg took a really neat black and white photo. You kind of expect Dracula to come walking out.
we were really amazed at how lush and green the uh, plants were this far north. Ireland's on the same latitude as northern Canada, so I would think it would be really cold, but it was actually pretty pleasant the whole time we were there. It was time to get back on the insanely narrow roads of Ireland to County Killarney where we spent the night and walked around town for a while in the town of Killarney. There are many good reasons for having a drink but the best one to enter me head. If my body can't drink when it's living, then it sure cannot drink when it's dead. So raise up your glasses, me hearties, and toast to your good health and mine. Let's be a good cheer while we all can drink beer, and may fortune on all of us shine. On the way to the sheepdog demonstration, we stopped by Kamanul Beach, and uh, it was pretty cool. There's a guy sitting there playing the little piccolo thing, and uh, we kind of stopped and just checked him out for a little bit. I'd have to say one of the highlights of the trip was Gordon Cavanaugh's sheepdog demonstration. The following is a sample of some of what we saw that day. You know what that is? A wig. Yes. My name is Two Pairs. <laughs> <laughs> he had it in the stock. There are my two dogs there now. The two brothers. They don't look fit or act like it or walk like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so the dog is more intelligent always. <laughs> we'll try and we'll see how we get on. We, we, we out. Out. We, we out. 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 Right. Right. Back. Right. Right out. Right out, out, go, go. Right, back, way, six. Right, 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 right. Right, right, right. Way, 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 way out. Way, 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 way. It was really impressive how the dogs were able to maneuver the sheep through this little uh, fence opening. Uh, that they used for practice in the middle of the field. And may fortune on all of us shine.
After the demonstration, we walked around the property a bit and I looked at one of the houses that some of his uh, old relatives actually lived in uh, hundreds of years ago. Alright, so we're in Dingle. Yes, we're on the Dingle Peninsula in Ireland and we just noticed there are a lot of berries here. And this is the first time that I can honestly say I have eaten dingleberries. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's got to be the best dingleberries I've ever tried. <laughs> Delicious. to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun always rise to shine warm on your face And a good friend you never to lack So raise up your glasses, me hearties And toast to your good health and mine Let's be of good cheer while we all can drink beer And may fortune on all of us shine After stopping by Inch Beach and uh, checking out the scenery there for a little bit, we cruised down down the highway where we got into some of the most precarious areas of the journey. Peg took videos of the rock wall on her side of the bus, and I took videos of the cliff going down to the ocean. It fell about 200 feet. Again, it's hard to believe this was a tour bus going down these narrow roads all along the Dingle Peninsula. So we were walking around downtown Dingle, which is not very big, but we ended up have a big lunch because we're going to be eating in about two hours our dinner so yes so we found a little cheese shop that has all these delicacies <laughs> no except the bread that come from super value but the bakery was closed but yeah artichoke hearts olives fresh cheddar mm. After a trip around the picturesque Dingle Peninsula, we stopped at the Celtic Whiskey Bar for a whiskey and chocolate pairing. Looks like somebody's becoming a connoisseur. The morning started off with the drive across the country to the River Shannon. This is where we took a ferry across on our way to the Cliffs of Moher.
when we arrived, we took a couple minutes to take a group photo. It's nice to remember some of the friends we made on this trip. The views here at the Cliffs of Moore were truly amazing. Again, this was definitely one of the highlights of our trip. The cliffs are believed to be about 320 million years old, with a 700 foot drop almost straight down to the ocean. Our next stop was the Burren. This is a national park in Ireland that is uh, karst limestone and it makes up many square miles. There's hardly enough dirt to even plant a garden in a lot of these places. Our next stop was Galway and the Galway Bay Hotel. This is the crescent moon coming up here. Same crescent moon you have at home. And just underneath it, probably just behind that cloud is Venus, just underneath it. You see it? So I was just on the radio for 15 minutes to Pittsburgh Public Radio. Really? For the last 12 years I've done the news at 6.15 on the second Sunday of every month. Four of us do it rotated. Uh, so 12 years I've done the news for 15 minutes. That's cool. Uh, from, news our, from, news Bar from Ireland. Uh -huh. uh, it's a show called Echoes of Aaron. It's been on radio for oh, 30, 40 cool. years. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you can get it online and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah. Brian was a wealth of knowledge that knew a lot of history about Ireland. I'm pretty certain at one point he must have kissed the Blarney Stone because this guy has the gift of gab. <laughs> O'Connor's Pub was our destination for the evening. They had great live music and tons of memorabilia hanging on the walls.
We were pretty happy with our view waking up in the hotel in the morning. We couldn't believe when we looked down and saw people swimming in the bay at 56 degrees Fahrenheit is what the water temperature was. After breakfast, our first stop was the Galway Cathedral. It's a Roman Catholic cathedral in Galway, Ireland, and it's one of the largest and most impressive buildings in the city. Although it looks like an old Renaissance structure, the construction began on this church in 1958 at the site of the old city prison. We really enjoyed spending the morning walking around downtown Galway and seeing the sights. The next leg of our journey took us to Athlone, Ireland. This is where we got on a reproduction of a Viking longship and took us to Sean's Bar, which is the oldest bar in the world. Here's Peggy, <laughs> waiting for Ragnar Lothbrook and his Viking ship to come. <laughs> After dinner and an overnight in Athlone, the next morning we were on the way to Dublin. St. James Gate is the location of the Guinness Brewery in downtown Dublin. This is a huge facility that uh, really takes up many city blocks.
we thought we were going to be seeing more of the brewing process, but uh, this turned out to be kind of a history of Guinness and multimedia and a lot of displays and everything. Another highlight of the trip was the visit to Taylor's Irish Night and Cabaret, just outside of Dublin. This is one of Dublin's most loved pubs, and it also brings you traditional Irish song and dance, and we had a great dinner there too. Dancers and the musicians were fantastic at this event. The Irish drum or Bodrum solo was one of our favorite parts as well. We had a great time at The Rock and are certainly glad that the distillery tour was canceled and they put this in its place. Well, our last full day in Dublin was action-packed and started with a hop-on, hop-off, double-decker bus tour. First stop was Trinity College to see the Book of Kells. This book is famous for its ornate artwork and it was completed around 900 A.D. Without question, one of the highlights of this visit was the library upstairs. Today, there's over six million printed volumes within this library of journals, maps, manuscripts, and music reflecting over 400 years of academic development.
what you see here is the old library long room. It's filled with over 200,000 of the library's oldest books and it's one of the most impressive libraries in the entire world. Also in the long room are busts of great philosophers and writers of the Western world. All are connected with Trinity College in Dublin. Our next stop was the majestic St. Patrick's Cathedral. As the largest cathedral in Ireland, St. Patrick's has been at the heart of Dublin and Ireland's history for over 800 years. St. Patrick's Cathedral began hanging regimental flags from the Napoleonic Wars in the 19th and 20th centuries. Regimental colors were hung from the walls and left to decay slowly over time. Soldiers do not die, they simply fade away. There are over 200 monuments dotted around the walls of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Many are large statues, some are stained glass windows, and some are simple brass plaques on the walls. The stained glass windows in the cathedral are awe-inspiring. Many of them date back over 200 years and are both beautiful and educational. Our last night in Ireland was kind of bittersweet. We went over to Nancy Hands and had a couple drafts and then on to FX Buckley's Steakhouse and had probably one of the best pieces of meat we've ever had in our life. Well, all good things must come to an end. So the next morning we hopped on the plane and headed back to the good old USA. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us online for our travel blog.
at Searching for Solitude. Thanks.